Agent Carter, Season 2, Episode 5, Thoughts. This episode is called The Italian Job. I mean, The Atomic Job. Another episode I love. The, uh, yes, this video will have spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. A heist episode. I love it. This is... I don't love this episode quite as much as the one before, but it is a very close second. And, yeah, let's dive right in. So, yeah, um, Dr. Wilkes still needs a little help not being creepy. But, you know, he, yeah, he wakes Peggy and tells her, don't believe me, just watch. And, yeah, it's like the, the zero matter is like following him around. Seems to like you. And yeah, there's a you know, he can he can tell that Whitney is is going after the Yeah. Let's see. I really like that, you know, Violet comes home and finds someone has broken into the place and picks up a bat instead of being stupid. And, yeah, Sousa wakes up and realizes that the ring fell out somewhere, which just, yeah. And he's, like, looking through the couch, and, you know, she's in the other room, but then she spots him, and she's like, what are you doing to my couch? And, yeah, they talk about, you know, she was apparently very hard on him in physical therapy, but it really helped. And, yeah, he does end up proposing to her, though he had hoped that the ring would be there and, and this whole, th yeah, but very, very sweet, and I, uh, they are so doomed. And, yeah, I... Whitney is getting really good at the the creepy stuff. Like it's right out of like a horror movie. You know, Calvin is like in bed. And he's like, oh, this is terrible. This is terrible. Okay, I'm gonna you know get out of bed, go out and go, you know get the clothes, and turns around. And she's there, and it was like you know we all called it. We've seen horror movies before. This is how this goes. You know, the fact that she looked like she was fast asleep. Two seconds ago does not mean anything here. And she's just like, good, you're awake. <clears throat> and let's see. Yeah, and Peggy and Edwin go into the the morgue. And he's worried about a legion of spiders. Should you be touching her? Look who's talking. And yeah, so she yeah, she absorbs the zero matter from I still cannot remember her name for the life of me, uh JS. And, and then she says, I need an atomic bomb. So at this point the show has reached like it's it's essentially parodying the the <clears throat> misogynistic jokes, which I think is going to work well for, because, because it's like, you know, there's that classic misogynistic joke about, you know, oh, women, they just keep asking for more and more. She's asking for an atomic bomb, you know, doesn't get much more, you know, so, yeah. Let's see, that's, I, I think that's a good way for the show to criticize misogyny. I really appreciate the accuracy when Dr. Wilkes explains the, the science, you know, you have, if you're going to recreate an experiment, you have to make sure all the variables are the exact same, and, let's see, yeah, and, you know, Sousa says, this is not the first time I've, you know, disarmed a, a bomb, and, you know, he lifts out, and, and they're practicing with, like, a sausage or something, something safe. And, you know, he accidentally drops it, and congratulations. Or, or, no, yeah, sorry, that comes a little later, but the, no, yeah, yeah, the, the, did I not? Huh. 
Oh, that's that is later. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that entire scene is later. Anyway, yeah. So the you know they go over all the the security and there, there's there's the repeated line of kill us all, which yeah they really thought this through. You can't blow up the 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 key the lock. You can't drill into it. You can't dig under. That yeah you gotta have the key. <clears throat> and. Yeah, and, and, you know, Calvin says, this is insane, and Whitney's like, you know who else they call insane? Galileo Figaro. And, yeah, Peggy congratulates Daniel and on the successful proposal, and Samber, Dr. Samberly straight up hands her a neuralizer. You know, that's, yeah, that's that's what that is. I don't hate the joke about, you know, we tested it on Jerry. No, you didn't. That's a, yeah. And so Peggy puts on a red wig and says that her name is Wanda. So that's, yeah, like, um... That's got to be a reference to Wanda Maximoff, although the IMDb trivia does not appear to to list it, but yeah. And yeah, so, you know, yeah, Hugh Jones does remember Agent, you know, that's, yeah, she made an impression. And, you know, she, like... She keeps frying his 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 brain with the neuralizer, and it's like I mean, according going off the fact that Ray Wise actually agreed to be in the uh, hold on, I'll have it momentarily. He actually agreed to be in one of the God's Not Dead movies. I'm going to have to assume that he's extremely conservative, so. Be careful about frying his brain. There's not that many brain cells in there to, you know, he, you're going to do some very significant damage. He doesn't have that much left to lose. And let's see. Yeah, and the key to success is in you. So he's wearing it, and yeah, she's struggling to to com compel herself to to open his belt but does eventually <clears throat> let's see and yeah and so the character listed as bombshell secretary returns and says did you have a nice lunch and he looks down and you know oh his belt was undone i must have and yeah, so Whitney and Calvin make a deal with Joseph Manfredi and the yeah, he's you know, it's it's a it's an incredible deal. So he is of course slightly suspicious. And then we have the classic scene of, you know, he's, yeah, the 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 show underlining just how dangerous he is. That, you know, he's going to beat to a pulp this guy for looking at Whitney, which, you know, yeah, very brutal. <clears throat> I appreciate that there's, like, blood on his knuckles. And the worst part is... This is like the third guy this week. He goes through them like shoes. And yeah, and then we get to the yeah, so Souza is like lifting out the the core, accidentally drops it, and Dr. Wilkes is like, "Congratulations. You just destroyed LA." Which is very funny. And yeah, Rose gets to be part of the heist and I quite enjoy, you know, 
Dr. Samberly asks Peggy, how did the memory erasing device work for you? And she's like, I forget. And let's see. Yeah, at first he's very standoffish against them. And then Rose asks, did you like my pie? Following it up with, would you like seconds? And yeah, that was... That was legitimately quite funny. And let's see. Yeah, and you know he he talks about, you know, he had eleven job offers, but he agreed to this one. He's he picked this one specifically because he got to go into the field, which Sousa himself promised him. So that's yeah. <laughs> And, yeah, they end up agreeing to, to take him with. And then they do the Reservoir Dogs walk. I realize it's not the only, you know, that's not the only movie that has, like, a slow motion walk towards the camera. But the setting, though, and the, the, the kind of, the, yeah, the kind of clothes that you'd have back in, you know, like, I, I'm aware that, obviously, by this point, the MCU had done a similar thing in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. But in that one, they're wearing this, like, space clothing kind of stuff. Where here, yeah, the guys are wearing suits, just like in Reservoir Dogs. And they set it to Pistol Peck and Mama, which, yeah, love this. It's, and, and they have the bit of... You know, Dr. Samberly, let's see, I think he, like, almost trips or something like that. And, yeah, um, very amusing that he can't stop, you know. Rose says, you know, we're married. Oh, married? Oh, no. My wife, I, I can't, I, I can't stop loving the, you know, hearing that word or something like saying that you know and <clears throat> and I love that you know he's whatever happened to please and it's like okay you're not this is not this does not help our mission and yeah they you know they they go away the guards turn around and they throw the little thing that like takes the electricity from the fence and, like, zaps the guards. It's like, holy crap. And... Let's see. Right, I really love about, you know, a, a good heist needs more than just some people trying to do a thing. You need complications. And the fact that Whitney... You know, they're trying to prevent Whitney from getting the nuke. And Whitney's already there. You know, she was there before they got there. So, you know, they opened the door and there was a guy resting against the door. Which is great because we've seen so many... We've seen the other side of that tons of times. There's so many movies and TV shows where someone will knock out a guy and rest him up against a door or a wall or something. And here it happened off screen. I've seen bigger. And, let's see, yeah, so, not only, there was already a little bit of concern about Sousa, you know, would he be able to, to do this without dropping the, the core, and now, you know, it's not going to be Sousa, it's going to be Jarvis, so, yeah, very nicely done. Okay, now that you've removed the core, you're gonna want to put it in the case. Did anybody remember to bring the case? And yeah, I love I love Rose encouraging Dr. Samberly. You are the smartest guy in the building, which I mean he might not be if they weren't there at night. But okay, right now he definitely is. Although I mean Whitney's also there, but you know he needs encouragement, and yeah, and that is also funny. Like he's you know. I can definitely lock that door. Oh, I locked the other door. <laughs> Which, you know, like, it would actually have been better if they didn't try to lock any of the doors. So that's, yeah. 
and because you know late we, we realized not long after Whitney has no idea where to look for it she's just going everywhere and it's a big building you know and yeah very cool when Peggy confronts Whitney and again Calvin is just completely useless like the the um let's see what was the thing um yeah so he yeah i i don't even remember it was just it was beyond useless and whitney you know yeah very very cool confrontation both of them you know i i really like that whitney is actually kind of impressed she's like you just very you know not bad you actually got in here you know and yeah they have a brief fight Whitney does try to absorb her but because of the plot armor I mean the the headbutt she's unable to and yeah but the you know she she breaks through the thing and is hanging off the thing and you know she she falls off and lands in the region's only spear factory and yeah so they yeah they bring her to to violet and point out no hospitals which yeah that whitney has definitely like put the word out <clears throat> because she saw peggy be impaled and you know yeah um you know violet gives the the different people different orders telling jarvis boil some water i am dying for a cup of tea and let's see yeah and <clears throat> calvin is really losing his temper with with whitney you know he he throws something against the wall and she has to to try to calm him down i mean let's see i don't think I don't think any part of the scene was actually played for comedy, so there's that at least. It's not great to, like... There are enough scenes of men intimidating their female partner. You know, that's... But at the same time, I mean, I get what they're doing. I, You know, Whitney, up until this point, has been able to, to guide him to, to what she wants to accomplish. And now she's starting to lose control of him. Um, I appreciate that the, you know, I don't know if it's perhaps a bit of meta commentary. The fact that throughout this episode there's a lot of scenes where we don't really see the scar because it's covered by some of her hair, which, you know, saves the, the makeup team for the show some work. And also makes sense because if she's walking around with that big scar visible you know people are gonna react to it she's not gonna get anything accomplished and yeah um violet does manage to to help peggy i appreciate it actually was it is the kind of thing where yeah you know I feel like she might need a tetanus shot in addition to what she was given, but yeah, like they they rinse out the wound and you know the the bleeding had stopped, which I'm not 100 percent sure well, that happened. Like, plot armor, but yeah, you know, it wasn't like it's based on where she was impaled. Those are not the kinds of wounds that would require a hospital as long as you've got someone who knows what they're doing. And, yeah, you know, doctor's orders do not get impaled again. Which, I mean, at this point, Steve is in the ice, so I don't think there's much threat of that. And, yeah, um, some of the last stuff that happens in the episode is Calvin calls a meeting of the council. Which, yeah, you know, that on the one hand, it's the kind of, you know... Calvin does not make the best decisions, and on the other, it is probably the only thing he's going to be able to do to stop Whitney, which at this point it seems like he's determined to, 
and we see Dr. Wilkes disappear. And yeah, let's get into some IMDb trivia. As within a great heist, this episode has a classic five-man band structure. Peggy's the hero, Sousa is the lancer, Rose is the big guy, Sam really is the smart guy, and Jarvis is the chick. When the SSR team pull up to the Roxxon facility to steal the uranium cores, they're disguised in a red vehicle, probably belonging to Howard, with Civil War antiques written on the side in gold lettering, an obvious reference to the upcoming Captain America Civil War and Iron Man's classic color scheme. Violet asks Daniel if he remembers a nurse friend of hers named Regina, who apparently is the one with the wart. Sarah Bolger, who plays Violet, plays the princess Aurora in Once Upon a Time, where Regina is the name of the evil queen from Snow White, when the original story disguises herself as a warty old hag to trick Snow White into eating a poisoned apple. Ken Marino, who plays Joseph Manfredi, and Ray Wise, who plays Hugh Jones, previously starred in the CW series Reaper. And <laughs> by treating Peggy's injuries in the middle of the night, Agent Sousa's fiancé, fiance, Violet, becomes the MCU's first night nurse. A role filled in the modern day Marvel Defenders saga series, beginning with Daredevil by Rosario Dawson as Claire Temple. And let's. Oh, fifth, yeah. When Peggy is impaled through her abdomen, the wound is placed just above her left hip, running completely through her body. This is the same location in which Natasha Romanoff was shot through her abdomen by the Winter Soldier, as she reveals in Captain America, the Winter Soldier. And I think that might be about... Yeah. Um... I will try to do an episode tomorrow, and yeah, um, it was kind of amusing when Peggy kept knocking out Hugh, and every single time he comes to, he says something really sexist, like, What's what's your you know okay saying what's your name is not sexist but calling a young woman you don't know darling, and then you know afterwards he says I heard a rumor about redhead women. Did the boys from sales send you? So yeah, really appreciate seeing a misogynist taken down like that.